Hi. Last time we took a closer look at some dyno sheets in order to compare two different engines and understand why controlling our boost in the best way possible is so important. Today, we're going to run this Evo 9 on the dyno using two different methods of boost control. The first will be the equivalent of a simple mechanical boost tap, while the second will be using Haltech's closed loop boost control and an electronic solenoid. We're going to maintain a maximum boost pressure of 15 psi with both methods. When using the boost tap, the same amount of air is bled off the wastegate regardless of the boost demand or RPM. When using the Haltech boost control, the electronic solenoid will start by bleeding 100% of the air off the wastegate to allow it to spool as fast as possible. Then, when the boost gets close to the target pressure, the ECU will take control of the solenoid. This will ensure that the boost curve is as flat as possible and as close to the target as possible. Okay, let's do the first run using our mechanical bleed tap method. Okay, we've just done our first power run using the open loop or the, uh, the mechanical bleed style boost control. We've made about 233 kilowatts uh, at 15 psi. Keep in mind this Lancer does have a stroker engine in it, which is why it's making slightly more power than a normal two liter engine. Next, we'll change to closed loop boost control and then we'll go through and compare the two dyno graphs. We've just done our second power run using Haltech's closed loop boost control. The red graph here is using the open loop style or the mechanical style, where the blue graph is our closed loop boost control. You'll notice that the peak power the car made is still 233 kilowatts of the wheels because we're still using the same 15 psi maximum boost pressure. The difference is in the mid range where we've picked up, give or take around 15 kilowatts of the wheels the whole way through the mid-range. This is because the closed loop boost controller is bringing the boost on earlier and allowing us to get the most out of our turbocharged engine. We've also got our Haltech data logging set up beside us here on the laptop. So we'll just have a quick look through and we'll just check the boost pressure versus RPM to see why the engine made more power through the mid-range uh, and compare the two, the open versus the closed loop, the boost response. So if we have a bit of a look at our graph here on the Haltech data logger viewer, we'll notice that the yellow line here is, the, is our closed loop style of boost control, whereas the blue line is our open loop. You'll see that both at, at exactly the same RPM, so at 33, 30, 31 to 3300 RPM, that using the open loop style of boost control, we're getting around 7.6 PSI of boost. Using the closed loop boost control, we're getting around 10 pounds. So you can see that the turbocharger is spooling up faster and that's where we're picking up our extra power. Now that we've made a comparison between our open loop and closed loop boost control with a targeted boost pressure of 15 psi, we'll wind the boost up to around 26 psi and we'll have a bit of a look at the differences when we're targeting higher boost pressures and when the engine's making more power. Okay, we've just done our two power runs at our targeted boost pressure of 26 psi. One using our bleed tap, the other using our closed loop boost control. Now, because we're targeting a much higher boost pressure, the turbocharger is working harder, so the closed loop boost control can work harder as well. Have a look at this power graph. You'll notice here, the red line comes up to around 355 kilowatts of the wheels, give or take. Whereas our blue line, using our closed loop boost control, still comes up to a very simple 358 kilowatts, but through the mid-range is really where it's picked up quite a lot of power. Through the mid-range here, we're seeing up to 45 kilowatts at the wheels. So it's nothing to sneeze about. That's a huge amount of power for something that's so simple to do. Now that you've seen the real world results from using electronic closed loop boost control, why not give it a go on your own car and let us know the results? To keep up to date with our technical channel, don't forget to subscribe and as always, if you have any feedback or suggestions for future episodes, leave them in the comments below. My name's Scott and I'll see you next time.